Okay, Shabir, perhaps because of the audience, the majority being Christian, a lot of questions are, um, are related to you. And uh, I'll, do a, I'll read a few questions that I feel are somewhat related. It has to do with conversion. Uh, this one is actually for both. How do you make peace with those, with, uh, with those people of your faith, uh, Muslim or Christian, who choose another religion? Muslim to become Christian and Christian to become Muslim. And related to this, if a man born in a Muslim family arrives at the age of 18 and wants to change their religion, what does the Sharia law say about this? And then there's others as well that have to do with the conversion from one religion to the other and why are there Christians in, uh, in prison uh, if um, Islam is a religion of, of peace? Uh, how can you say that Islam is peaceful if we see Christians in prison in some of these countries? So if you could come uh, respond to those questions and uh, David also just briefly on, because uh, this one is asking for both. Sure. Uh... In the classical uh, Muslim tradition, it was widely accepted that apostates should be put to death. Uh, some, some scholars made exceptions for women, and, and that should, the Hanafi scholars, for example, said that uh, though the men might be or should be killed, uh, not so women. And, and that shows that there is not this difference of opinion among great uh, classical scholars shows that there is no clear injunction either in the Quran or accredited to the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in, in an authentic saying of his that would lead to the conclusion that the apostate must be put to death. So how did that become such a widespread uh, belief among Muslims? There is a hadith that says, a hadith is something outside of the Quran, it, it is a snippet of information uh, usually attributed to the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, reporting on something he said or, or did, or something that he might have acquiesced in, or thought to have acquiesced in. Uh, the, the report says that he said, if one changes his religion, you should kill him. Uh, but the, the wording, now a response from myself and some others who are looking to, into this uh, in our present context, and find it abhorrent that you're killing a person because he changes his faith, what we would do is we would say that this hadith it, it cannot be taken as, a, as a, or it cannot be concluded from this hadith that the apostate should be killed because this hadith is quite general. Uh, if, if, if any person, whether a person uh, reneges from Islam or reneges from another per, uh, faith, would fit this description if a person changes his religion. We would look at the other part of the hadith which says, and he, changed, and he leaves his community, he abandons his community. And what this seems to imply is that in the time when, if this was actually said by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to begin with, it would mean that at the time when every man was a soldier at, at war, could be called at any time to defend the Muslim populace, he then knew the secrets of the Muslim military, because he was potentially or actually a soldier of war. In that case, if he joins the enemy, it will be like today's equivalent of one of our army personnel having beer with, with a, a soldier from the other side, from one of our enemy uh, armies. And if that would not be acceptable. He might be charged with treason. And of course, in ancient times, people were treated very harshly for things like, like treason. Uh, but looking more broadly, uh, we would say that the Quran shows that there should be no compulsion in religion. The second chapter of the Quran in the 256th verse says la ikraha fi deen, and the wording is put, is put such in Arabic that it negates in an absolute way. There is no compulsion in religion. This means absolutely no compulsion. And naturally, if you kill a person for leaving uh, the religion of Islam or any religion, that means you're compelling him to stay in the faith, and you're going against this verse of the Quran. In fact, some classical scholars were aware that they're going against this verse of the Quran, but they said the verse is abrogated. But we would say the verse is not abrogated, it still holds, and you cannot force a person to stay in the faith, anyone is free to stay or leave. <laughs>